to So What Were You Wearing? It's great to have you here. My name is Heidi Townsend, and I'm the host of this show. And this is a show about discovering your passion and exactly where your passion lies. And today, our special guest is Anne. She's here today and is going to be talking to us about how she found her passion in her work and that it was quite the discovery and the journey that occurred took her around many twists and turns. So Anne Baudet, welcome to So What Were You Wearing? Thank you, Heidi. So glad to be here with you. And what a wonderful topic, how to find your passion. It is. It's a fabulous topic. And of course, we are going to want to know, so what were you wearing when that happened? And so let's set the context here. As, as you know, I'm not, this is new to me as well, as far as how your journey transpired. And so let's set the context of where you were in your life, you know, both physically, emotionally, and what was going on for you as this time started to emerge. So welcome again, and I'm going to give it to you. Thank you. Um, yes, that's, it's really interesting how you said, you know, you're going to listen to the journey along with your audience, because um, when you had invited me to the interview, I said, oh, I got to prepare my whole story. I, I got to tell her everything. And, and you said, no, 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 I don't want to know anything. It's spontaneous. That's the idea. So um, just so everyone knows, this is completely off the cuff, spontaneous. Um, Heidi didn't want to read anything about me. So um, yeah, so um, at the time when I really discovered my purpose, I was doing a whole bunch of things as um, often we women tend to do. And I just had this nagging little voice about, about doing, you know, my writing and um, something I'd always wanted to do. And I'd always kept my toes in writing, writing freelance and, and doing things like that. But it was really starting to call me. And I had raised my three sons. I was a you know, at the point in my life where it's like the second half of my life is ahead of me. And um, I just, I wasn't internet savvy because I had done a lot of, you know, hockey trips, band trips. It was um, everything invested for their development. So I just had a little time to breathe and I discovered the internet and I thought, oh, this is intriguing, this thing called a blog. And I started um, going on and learning about WordPress and I thought, what a cool platform. The, the developers donate their time so the whole world can have a blog, like a free blog. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's 65 million users uh, worldwide. You can pay for services with them as well. But I thought, what an amazing way to get your voice out into the world in this. Yeah, so, so that's what you did, right? You used yes, that's blog. correct. So I fumbled and fiddled around and I finally figured out how to start one and I just thought well nobody's going to want to read it but during my time raising my three kids we had gone to the public library every week so I could encourage them to read and while there I got out well it turns out I got out about a hundred self-help books and just read them all and it kind of healed some of the problems I had faced from my past and it was just a great way to to feel better so, so I had us, thought, tell us oh, a little bit about that, you know, just in what happened as far as there you are at the library. And where is this taking place? Just to kind of set the context again, is this uh, where are you located and where were you located at that time? Right. Um, so I'm outside of Vancouver um, in a place called Cloverdale. Okay. And it's a little town. It's really cute. It's got a sort of a 1940s um, downtown center. We have numerous movies filmed there. Um, Danny DeVito was there. Um, everybody comes to film there. They're building a, mm -hmm. a permanent soundstage for Supergirl and everything. So um, yeah, so I take, you know, started out taking the double stroller and the snuggly. I had the three of them on my body. And every day we'd just go out and get fresh air and walks. And as they got older, we'd drive down there after school. And um, yeah, just so they would get to be good readers. And I couldn't help but noticing, you know, uh, titles um, popping out at me about things that I needed to work on on myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I just checked them out as the boys checked out theirs. And um, just 
I learned a whole bunch of things like you can actually reparent yourself. You can talk to your your child and and heal it. Um, it, it. You know, I learned a lot of fascinating information and it made me feel so much better. And I just thought, wouldn't it be great if I could share that with other people? Aha. Uh-huh. So this started to evolve as you were checking these books out and your children are growing up, right? Obviously, right. They don't, they're they just little little by becoming small adults, I'm sure, you know, and so there you were reading and reading and reading and wondering how you could share this information that it sounds like was very moving and touching to you due to what was going on in your life, whatever, whatever was going on in your life. And so this was helpful. Yes, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. I even learned how to meditate. So when I felt stressed, I would I started meditating. I had a meditation chair, and um, you know that was quite a while ago, and I've done it ever since. And um, and then I got once I got on the internet, I found a group called Choose Yourself with James Altucher, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, choose yourself in life. You're always choosing everyone else, and. Um, it really appealed to me and it was just kind of a groundswell movement with a few hundred people at the time. So I got on there every day and it, he just helped me so much. I just consider him a mentor because um, all the things I needed to hear, he'd say, you know, I've been through it too and, and I can help you. And he would write um, things and he would engage with us. And yeah, then uh, one day he said, I'm going to teach you guys how to write a book and put it on Amazon. And I was like my, I'd always dreamed of writing a book, but I'd written like three and I had them under my bed, but I didn't know how to format them or finish them or, you know, just thought, oh, I can't do it. Oh, Anne, hold on here just a second. (laughs) So you wrote three books while your children were growing up and as you were evolving through this time and they're sitting there. Mm-hmm. So when did you start writing these books? I mean, okay, seriously. so one of them was a children's book about a hockey team. And it was just a little st- a super cute story happened. Um, and of course, I was always reading children's books to my boys. We'd all snuggle up in the bed and, and they'd be like, Mom, stop laughing quit, and read the book. Because I'd read them The Hobbit and I'd think it was so funny. I could barely read. Like, um, huh. So it was kind of a special time that we shared. Sure. Um, yeah, so... So I did, I wrote a kid's book and I illustrated it and, but just thought, I don't, I don't really know what to do with it now, you know? Right. So there was this calling there that had started when, you know, in those infant years for the children, actually, that there's something because not everybody, I mean, I can tell you, I have never written a book, even a draft and put it under my bed like that. (laughs) Never. I mean, you know, it's like. I wish, but no. And so there, so it's kind of like the inkling, this, the beginning of this emergence was happening back then. And um, did you, did you get a sense of that, you know, with your love of writing or, you know, um, or was it just something you did just to maybe pass the time and not really realizing that that was this important to you? No, um, what actually happened was about 10 of the members of the Choose Yourself group said, let's write a book. James is telling us how to write a book. And I said, okay, I'm on it. So I become team lead and I'm emailing everyone saying, okay, I've got my chapter written already. Um, As soon as you guys said the idea, I I rushed off my chapter. So let's go. And then people said, oh, but it's going to cost money. Oh, it's, I don't have time. You know, um, they had... 10 million reasons. So I thought, well, I might as well just keep going. And um, what happened, what started happening with my blog is I would go on the computer to start writing and my inbox was just going bing, bing, bing. Like it was filling up with emails um, from WordPress. So I, I didn't really know anything about what I was doing. And I thought, why would anybody want to read anything about me taking my dog to the landfill to clean up, to spring clean my backyard? You know, it just didn't seem to fit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so from the experience of blogging, I thought, well, I, my blog started getting like, it got a million views and I had like 35,000 email subscribers. Um, so I thought, well, I think I've got something here. I've connected with some people and I think I can take it, take this somewhere. I think this is my thing. 
Um, so and that from there, there that I can go. Yeah. How, what time. were you like? So you said you thought you could take it. Now, had this passion, did you? And that's what we're trying to, you know, it's kind of like, how did this come to you? How did you know, or when did you know that this was really something that was important to you? And that was really your calling from whatever you were doing before to all of a sudden going, the light goes on and it's like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So I was doing um, about four different jobs at the time, um, some from home, some from out of the home. Um, I was trying to set up like seven streams of income so I could write. And I was a property manager, I was a tutor, I was a caregiver, I had a consulting business. So at night, I would just lay in bed and just dream about writing. And I thought, well, I, I have to find a way I don't know how because I love blogging Blogging's my new baby because my kids are leaving the nest and um, so I just would go to bed for a few hours and then I'd get up at three o'clock in the morning, just try not to wake the kids up and, and just tiptoe to my computer and start blogging. Wow. Yeah. So That's I know what I was wearing when it happened. Tell me, tell me, or tell us, I should say me and all of our viewers, because we're here. No, it's very, this is very inspiring to me to hear that you were doing four jobs so that you could create a place and a space for yourself to be able to write, even to getting up at three o'clock in the morning to do that. That's just, I mean, that's, that's, that's from the heart. That's for sure. So oh, what wow. were you wearing when this, uh, when this all happened? So I was wearing a pink nighty with a cat on the front and the words meow on the top. How adorable. That's when it, when uh, you said, here I am, here I am, I'm yours. <laughs> yeah, this is the cat's meow, you know? Like, yes. <laughs> wow, no, it really, what I'm hearing too is that the blogging is somehow that that was an avenue for you, for your voice to start going out into the world, which um, sounds like it was important to you as well. And, you know, because you said you just mentioned, I mean, who would want to hear about me taking the dog to the landfill? Is that yeah. or going to the landfill with the dog? Obviously, with a million viewers, you, there were people interested in your story because of you, right? Yes. So, um, so the blog led to many things. Um, I saw a contest and it said, um, win lunch with me. And it was, um, I don't know if you know Shark's Tank, the show. No, I don't. Tell me about it. Well, investors are um, in a studio and people come and pitch their ideas to them. And they say, can you invest money in my business? Um, and in Canada, it was called Dragon's Den and it was hugely popular. So one of the members had a contest and he said, I wrote this book and I'm, I wanna you know, promote it. And I said, oh, I'll read your book. I'll review it like if I win the lunch or not. And um, I watched you on the show. And so anyways, I won this um, luncheon with him and some other people. And um, it was because of my blog. Like he, he said, he checked out my blog and um, his staff voted for, for me to, to come. And um, That's fantastic. Yeah. That is just spectacular. So cool. Or you must have been so excited, I would mm -hmm. think. So yeah, it's th there you were, you just kind of put it out there and you won the prize. Yeah. And then I, I kind of um, kept blogging and I thought, hey, if I just extend these blog posts, I can turn them into a book, like 10 blog posts about, you know, loving yourself, which I had, um, my taglines were positive thinking, loving yourself, optimizing yourself for my blog. Mm -hmm. So then I got this cooked up this idea that I'm going to write a blog, uh, sorry, a book based on my blog. Makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Use the content that you've already generated and voila it goes into a book so that and then what happened from there so i did it in about three months i had the whole book on amazon um, based on james's instructions um and i just all i did was extended 10 blog posts into 10 chapters and i published my first book pump your own tires crossing the bridge to loving yourself and then i was hooked i was like oh i gotta write more books 
<laughs> That's so exciting. That is so exciting. So it all, it just all kind of led you to where you are today. And through these many months, many years of following what is drawing your attention. So that to me is the real interesting part of this. It was initially reading the books that were helping you as you're going to the library with your children and then that evolving into the blogs and then into the books. But all the while it's like following the breadcrumbs, right? Along the path to, um, from the story Hans and, um, but Hans and Gretel, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the breadcrumbs of, where is where are my interests where is my my heart leading me even to the point and i don't want to underscore it too much but still you were doing four jobs and doing your writing i mean that's a lot that's really and and with three children so i mean it's not for the faint of heart and yet you're here to tell us that this is doable and to end up with a an actual product that you are selling that me is so meaningful to you yes yes okay. i'm pretty stubborn so um that's my advantage is that what you call that <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna find a way <laughs> nothing's that's gonna stop me <laughs> okay so number one be stubborn yes <laughs> be relentless don't let it go just keep following the passion so i hear that that's a really good point to underscore because I'm sure there were times possibly I shouldn't say I'm sure but I wonder let me ask you were there times when you wondered to yourself with all you know the children the other work all of that were there times when you just went you know I just can't do one more thing I cannot do this any longer um that's it was there did you ever run you know hit up against that wall or or what happened for you Oh, yeah, because um, when you think, you know, you're doing something and you're not making money at it, it gnaws at you um, and other people gnaw at you as well. Like, oh, well, is it paying you? Um, but it was paying me in other ways that aren't monetary that were more valuable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was it was building something and it was finding a balance between, um, you know, serving others, serving yourself. Um, yeah, just your creative impulses. Like if you don't get them out, they're going to come out in other ways. And um, it just felt so good to, um, like blogging is a very interactive thing. I would get a lot of emails. Um, and this one lady emailed me and said, did you know you were in the Altature report in New York? It's a, it's a fiscal report and we all pay to be in it. And I saw your story. So I want you to teach me how to blog. And I'm like, no, no, I didn't. I didn't at all. But James had put a call out and said, how did you bootstrap your businesses, people? And just for a laugh, I, I wrote my story to him and I said, well, I, I, had all, I didn't have any time or money or anything. I had all these you know, kids and expenses. So what I vowed to myself that every time I got $5 in change, I would put it in a pickle jar in my closet and that I'd, it said blog on it. I stuck a little paper that said blog and I just hide it in my closet. I won't tell anybody what it is because I might, it might not happen. And um, so I go in every time I got a $5 bill and put it in. And whenever I felt really awful, I'd go hug the jar and it was my hope. Oh my goodness. The secret, the secret yeah. is the pickle jar <laughs> in the closet. The pickle jar. I was in love with it because it was building and building. And then one day I had enough to get like the blog hosted because you can write a WordPress press blog, but not have a website. Okay. That is just so inspiring. I cannot begin to tell you. It's like said, that's just amazing to have that and for you it was a pickle jar and that yeah. that signify you know and we're each going to have our own whatever that is whatever our pickle jar is but that it just gives me goosebumps hearing that it's oh. so potent in its intention potent with your intention that said this is my hope and dream yep yeah. it seems like it's way out there and this is what I've got to represent it right here with me. And I keep that and I hold it close, you know, when I need to, when I, 
you know, want to feel that dream or that aspiration that I have. Oh my goodness. Yes. That's really, I think, what a great lesson. And how did you come? I mean, was it, I mean, how did you come to, I, to do the pickle jar? I mean, was it just something you pulled randomly off the, out of um, the cupboard or how did that happen? Well, it just represented like, if, if I needed $250 and I didn't have it, well, what if I have five, you know, what if it takes me a couple of years or like, it doesn't matter. Cause once you have the dream, um, you know, you, you, once you take action is what it is. Um, you can sit and dream, but, um, so that was my little action and it didn't take away from anybody else. You know, I still was able to pay for everything else and just build slowly, um, my dream. And it, it just felt really good because I didn't have a lot of confidence at the time and um I was learning learning confidence and to believe in in my purpose mm -hmm. confidence and believing in your purpose along the path right when at times it was maybe not the brightest day you know when there were all kinds of other things pulling at you demands desires needs of your children I mean and for your children you know it's like yeah you know of course you want everything them and and yet there's also the passion and the desire for this calling that I'm seeing that you had in the world that's really really something yeah I've heard resilience you know that stubbornness the not wanting to give up right and now this is so important to have that it's kind of like a secret place that i mean that's what it feels like to me it's like yeah my secret place in the closet with the pickle jar <laughs> you know? and it's like yes and that that keeps the hope it's like keeping the flame alive right yes. keeping the hope alive yeah mm -hmm. and so and so you shared this with that with the teacher that you had done this is that right did you share that with him or was that with the teacher with um what's his name oh, I'm sorry oh, I'm James. yes so James. um so I said oh yeah I bootstrap mine for five dollars and here because he said you know I always have people um wanting advice about how to start a business and they say oh I can't I don't have a thousand dollars I don't have and mm -hmm. I said no you can you can do it with five dollars because you know once once you've um, set your intention, like you say, it, you already have it, it's already manifested just in your mind, but not in the physical world yet. So mm -hmm. um, you just have to take the actions and, and everything conspires. Um, and then shortly after my blog got a million views, WordPress put out a, put out a, um, a fan out a message and said, would anybody like to come and speak at our community um, WordPress? in Vancouver and I said yeah I would and you know just like everything just throw my hat in and um they said they accepted me and um yeah I spoke to 125 paying guests um about how to get a million views on their blog for to help their businesses and uh, it was super great that's fantastic what a great recognition of everything that you had done mm -hmm. and how valuable it was and that's, you know, I think that is another lesson is sometimes we think that what we have doesn't have value, like that a little bit of questioning at the beginning, who wants to know that I'm going to the landfill, right? <laughs> of yes. course, we want to know. <laughs> and we want to know everything else. And so how, you know, <laughs> isn't it curious, though, and that how important that confidence piece and that you went and spoke about this, but to uh recognize the value that is it's kind of like the hidden value right that has to be unearthed and so yeah. that you were able to mine that yourself you know and get past the 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 hesitations that you had the concerns all of this and then actually go speak about it at this conference that's just remarkable that is remarkable wow so so there you were talking about your blog and you had you already published your first book or was that yes. okay mm -hmm. so you had published the first book and um and this of course just you know again supported what you were feeling in your heart right I, you put your hat in the ring again 
and yeah. you're you're there. You're a presenter. You're a speaker on this topic. And then from there, what happened? What's what was your next step? So um, I had been to a conference in San Diego, and um, it was a branding conference, basically. Um, because I was trying to figure out where do I go from here mm -hmm. and when I was speaking at WordPress the fellow that was videoing the um, session he came running up to me and he goes hey I really want to write a book I'm a photographer I live at Cultus Lake and I've got you know tons of photographs I don't know what to do and I said oh pictures worth a thousand words so I want you to tell me what you were feeling and where you were at the time you you did your photograph print it in a book and write the captions underneath you'd be surprised people everybody has a story and nobody thinks their story has any value they think oh it's just this is just what I do every day like I go out out my door and I clean up my yard I, I'm telling you I got 10,000 likes on that post um, because I guess everyone was dreading going going and cleaning all the leaves out of their backyard you know it's it's something that you you don't feel motivated to do so he just went oh my god I've sat there with all these photographs and now now I know exactly what to do with my book I know what it's going to look like so I thought hmm like I have a this I'm bursting when I learn something I want to teach someone else mm -hmm. um I used to teach my brother when I came home from school I I teach him my lessons he had um developmental disabilities and he couldn't go to school so I'd come home and teach him everything I learned um, and I've always been like that. It's like what I learn, I just I just need to share it. And then the people's feedback helps me learn more about the subject. Um, so I thought, mm -hmm. hey, I wonder if I could teach people how to write books while I write them. And I met a publisher and a book coach in San Diego. And the publisher mm -hmm. said, oh, if you can teach people how to write fiction, because I had started a fiction novel, um, there's a big demand and I can't do it. I, I teach people nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, so it, yeah, just got it whirling around in my head uh, about doing that. Well, kind of the idea started and then was yes. met when you went to this conference, you had the idea. Yes. And just by starting to feed that idea, the response showed up in the world. Mm -hmm. That's very, um, it says a lot right there, just saying, and also taking action, like you said, to go there and to really, you know, put your information out and keep the inquiry alive. That's just amazing. And that he came to you, this photographer, and said, you know, just based on you talking about writing your blog, can you help me write a book? <laughs> it's, so, no. it's kind of like those inquiries are coming in and coming yeah. in and coming in. And so then, so it just, keep, it's kind of like one thing is building on another as you're following the steps and following your, what, what's next for you. And so here you are. And so then did you start coaching or coaching people on writing non, or writing fiction, I should say? Um, I did, like I wanted to, I was advised, I actually hired a, a business coach and she said, oh, start teaching immediately. And I said, but I haven't written a fiction book. I feel like a fraud. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. You don't have to write a fiction book. You know how to write it because you've written a book. And I went, nah, I, I just for personal reasons, I really want to go through writing a fiction book before I start telling someone else how to do it. So I hunkered down and in six months, I wrote a fiction novel and oh published it with uh, self-publishing publisher that I had met at, in San Diego. She actually lives um, on, in the Gulf Islands, not too far from me. Um, so I went through that process of working with the publisher mm -hmm. and it taught me a lot too. Um, and then I thought, okay, now I'm ready to, to um, do a course on, on book writing. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, all of these steps, just one more and knowing what was important to you. So not necessarily putting yourself out there before you were ready. I'm hearing, you know, that's that's important to make sure, even though the book, the, the coach you were working with said to just go ahead and do it. You knew you knew there were certain steps you wanted to do first and you did that. And yeah. then it was the next step for actually starting your your business of of coaching people writing books is that where where you are at this point yeah so um i 
you know, it was a three year process of conceiving of the idea and deciding how I would do it. And um, starting out by coaching people that either had read, sorry, had written a book and hired a coach and were stalled out or mm -hmm. um, had an idea or had an ongoing book. Um, so I, I started with about five people and um, just went on calls with them. And it was amazing because they were all from completely different walks of life, all completely different cities and countries and interests. And um, so, I, you know, books are kind of a universal thing. They are. It is. And I think people have a book inside them and some people want to write them and some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's got their story, right? I'm, I'm sure you've seen that time and time again. My yeah. goodness. So you're just, so you're in the, in the throes of it, right? Writing your own books, helping other people write their books and just living basically your dream, right? Yes. yes. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's quite a journey that I've, you've shared with me, that's just really profound how, you know, where you've come from and from this idea to all of us, you know, really making it tangible, real mm -hmm. and actionable that you can really go for. So, but tell us um, what's um, something that, that like brings light and joy into your heart with your work that you're doing now? Oh, um, well, I love the fact that um, people can get their voice out into the world because um, writing is very healing and therapeutic. Um, like I did morning pages uh, with Julia Cameron for six months, Unbroken Chain, every morning when I got up, I would roll out of bed and, you know, just start in my notebook before my inner critic woke up. And it was just amazing what came out onto the pages that mm -hmm. my conscious mind wasn't even aware of, like um, problems that I would mention over and over again. Okay, I need, you know, I, she said, don't read it for a month, but then after a month, you can read it once a week or, or once a month or something. So I would go back and I would just see myself that I didn't really even recognize. It would be, um, oh, I need to fix that. I keep talking about it. Um, so your thoughts um, keep going around in your head. But when mm -hmm. you write them and speak them, um, somehow you name it. And um, so I felt there's probably a lot of other people who need to get their voice on paper and who can help a lot of other people if they do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, what I'm here, that's beautiful just to be able to help them get their voice out as a, as a, a healing process yes. as well, mm -hmm. right? To do it from from all the different levels and to just have be heard for what they truly have to say and want to say and want to share with the world. And I also kind of heard underlying that that can change the world as well based on that. Yeah, so you're really in that work. That is just so beautiful and just really just amazing. Just everything that you've shared and just, I mean, you and your nighty at three in the morning getting up to work. That's like, oh my God, I'm here in spite of everything. I'm doing it. And then <laughs> and then the pickle jar. I mean, those are my, but you know, and you just had such resilience to really move all this way in your life to where you are now. And just following the beckoning, following the call that is so you that's so true to you and and just um you know having the resilience like you said the stubbornness you know having the willingness to step up and to do the other things that the confidence and and being able to really be there and respond and know you know when the times are tough just to hold on to whatever our version of the pickle jar is right and no, nothing is too small as I love the $5, you know, or whatever it was that you put in there that you, nothing's too small is what I hear. It's just like you, you can do it. And just to 
create that secret place that you can hold close to you uh, somehow. So I'm just, yeah, just really so appreciative of, of everything you've shared and your journey. And I have, is there, what final words would you like to say or additional words or continuing words would you like to share oh. with our audience about your experience? Um, yeah, just uh, last month, I actually, after three years and a lot of help from a lot of people, I was in a writing group called Notes on Your Notes, and I gave my whole script to, to the fellow there, and um, he looked it over and he just held it and, and asked me for it, and I thought, oh, he's taking me seriously, and that's important that people don't, you know, say, oh, you know, there's been a lot of courses and you know, why would they take yours? Like, like, don't think, um, like what he said to me is you're not just one of a crowd, you're you and your unique thing that you have to share is important. Mm -hmm. um, so last month I actually filmed um, two courses to, to, they're gonna be coming out in the spring to teach people digitally how to write books and I'm gonna coach them um, along with the courses but yeah I would just say um, you have an inner knowing and I always had the inner knowing about writing since I was about six years old but I, I had so much resistance to it I had so many reasons why it wouldn't work and I couldn't do it and um, you know just I, I guess I wasn't ready and my you know process turned out perfectly but just yeah, do something like have something to look forward to that pulls you to your goal and, and never give up. Don't doubt yourself. Oh, and that's just beautiful. That is just so inspiring. It really, really is to never give up and just to believe in yourself. Those are just beautiful words. And to know that what you have to offer is worthy, right? And that's, I mean, you're living proof of this. That's great. And so where can people find you if they want to learn more about what you do? Read your blogs, of course. Yes. <laughs> sort of thing. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm on anboday.com and I have official Anboday on Facebook is for my writers. And I'm on Instagram, Anboday. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh, that's great. And we'll add that in you know, when we post this for our viewers so that they know how to find you. And most importantly, just thank you for being you and for sharing you with us and sharing your journey and, you know, just your resilience that you've really, you know, hung on to and made everything happen and just kept going step by step moment by moment. I just, we're so grateful to have you on So What Were You Wearing? And um, hopefully we'll get, get some updates from you in the future as far as how things are going with your passion in your life. And just from me to you, I want to say, I'm so glad that you followed your passion that started when you were six years old and that you've, you're taking the teaching that you so generously shared with your younger brother, right? in your early years and you're actually sharing this now as well with others so big big gratitude to you Anne. oh and, thank you Heidi uh, it's never too late that's I guess that's the message people think oh I'm too old and you know I I missed my calling you never missed your calling if, if you're alive you know I love it if you're breathing on the planet it's not too late <laughs> Thank you. It's not too late. Is there anything else that we should hear from you before we uh, sign off? Or well, no, I just I'm really grateful that you had me on here. It was really wonderful talking to you, and I love your show. I've I've seen all the other um, episodes that you've done, and I really encourage people to follow you on YouTube because you oh. go deep into the subject, and and it's wonderful. And thank you so much. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye, Anne.